The next trend that I would like to uh, speak about is cultural diversity. We are a very diverse country and we are a very diverse church and we are becoming more so. There are various epochs in our history, the history of the world, in which there are large movements of people. Possibly we are in that place right now, which is the most movement since, Second world, since the Second World War, and where there's the, the greatest movement of people. Uh, but that collection over history in our country and the continuing needs for migration and for uh, refugees and the like have left us in very diverse places. The Archdiocese of Los Angeles has mass in 42 different languages every Sunday, every Sunday. We probably, uh, I don't know what we have every Sunday, but you know, it's a handful of languages for sure. And, um, and, the, and there's probably the need for more of them. Uh, we have a large number of Afghani refugees in our archdiocese right now. We have Congolese. We have Vietnamese. We have Korean. Uh, yesterday we were with the uh, the priests who the new new pastors, and we have a new pastor for the Korean community who actually comes from Korea, who is lent to us every year by a bishop in in Korea, and uh, and the struggle. So every one of these groups, including we who are born here, have to figure out how to adapt and how to pay attention to, to include, and to welcome others into, into our midst. It is a great gift and a great challenge all at the same time. You cannot say it's only a gift or it's only a challenge. It is both of those things together. And we have to use the energy of the gift to be able to deal with the challenge, challenges that are necessary. It's a, it's a beautiful dance that we're doing to be able to appreciate. And this, this both appreciation and accepting the gifts and the challenges uh, of cultural diversity in our archdiocese is not new. I mean, I have been around for 58 years starting in the seminary, and there have been conversations about it the entire time that I've been here. And, there are, uh, uh, and although I grew up in a community that was almost entirely German when I moved to it, it no longer is either. So, I mean, there are, there are no places that are exclusively one group anymore. And, and therefore, we all have to open our minds and our hearts to that which unites us, to calls us to this partnership, to calls us to recognize we're on the journey together, and that's our baptism. We have to find out the, the dignity of uh, seeing each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. And so we have to learn to appreciate, respect, and learn to work in a multicultural church uh, throughout the world. It is what the word Catholic means. It is universal. It is universal. Uh, every time I travel to Europe, I am embarrassed that I don't know the number of languages that everybody else around me knows. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm uh, adequate in English and Spanish. But when I go there, uh, I've got a good friend over there, you know, six or seven languages. Our own Father Krikor, who is our, uh, our judicial uh, vicar and tribunal judge, I think he knows seven languages. It's something like that. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing to be able to, to see that. We need, to we need to include. And it's nice that English is the most universal language but we, uh, we mean, or at least it's, well, that's certainly not true when you count China and a few other places. It's the language of business and the like, but still, uh, we need to be open and we need to train our clergy and our leaders to be able to listen in more than one language and to be able to particularly appreciate the cultures that they don't, uh, they don't enjoy being a member of. <laughs>